Hello and welcome. Hello. Hello. Um, welcome to the Wayward Strand stream as part of Ludo Naricon 2020. Yay. Wayward Strand, for those of you, I think if you're tuning in now, you're probably quite familiar, but for anyone else, um, is a heartfelt narrative game that we are making along with, uh, like much more people our team gets quite big sometimes um which is about casey a teenage girl who is visiting an airborne hospital for the first time uncovering its mysteries and exploring the lives of the patients and staff on board i'll introduce myself first my name's Maze wallen my pronouns are they them and i handle most of the audio for wayward strand uh, please i'm goldie Goldie Bartlett, my pronouns are she and her, and I handle a lot of the art stuff for Wayward Strand, uh, a bit of the biz dev, uh, and most of the jokes. <laughs> Sorry, no, that's not true. <laughs> <laughs> well, but you, uh, you increased your uh, percentage right there. So uh... <laughs> <Thanks>. <laughs> I'm uh, Jason Backer, uh, my pronouns are he, him. Um, I've got some exciting light streaming through my window that makes my hands look like they they glow uh and um, on yeah on wayward strand i uh, do some um writing production design and programming and um yeah just kind of contribute bits and pieces to each of those yeah so to start we'd love to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land that each of us are on and whichever lands that you might be on I pay my deep respect to elders of these lands, communities, past, present, and future. Wayward Strand was made on the lands of the Wurundjeri and Bunurong people of the Kulin Nations and is set on Bunurong country. We work in collaboration with the Bunurong Land Council. Sovereignty was never ceded. These lands always were and always will be Aboriginal land. Our team believes that we must engage in truth telling so that we can join Australia's history with the over 60,000 years of history that was here before us, so that we can move together united. Ludo Narricon was organised by a fellow traveller in partnership with STEAM, and we really want to give them a big thanks for hosting Wayward Strand um, for Ludo Narricon 2020. It's a really great event and we're really happy to be taking part and chatting about Wayward and all things narrative games. Yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> it's been a cool community. Um, it's a pretty huge deal. Like there's so much content all happening at once. It's a bit overwhelming. Um, on our end, yeah, there's a demo version of Wayward Strand available um, throughout the week to download on Steam along with a whole lot of other demos for great games, plus sales and heaps of streaming and panels to dive into like this one. When you go to the Ludo Narricon page on Steam, you can just keep scrolling downwards and there's just more and more and more. I don't know if you guys have checked that out yet, but it's pretty like, it's really long. It's like a ream yeah. of content. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, you can follow us and also ask us lots of questions on Twitter at Wayward Strand and on our Discord where there's a link on our Steam page and it's also been tweeted a few times. Um, and also members of Wayward Strand are popping in and out of the stream chat whether we're live or not. So we have a lot of looping content um, for all of Ludo Narricon. So we hope to see you there. The demo that we're talking about now and that we're showing is a work in progress version of the game. Um, so you get to see sort of where we're at at the moment and see us sort of deep dive into the different bits of tech and the design thinking and the narrative and the art and the audio and the animation and everything. Um, uh, and I think it's a cool preview of a game that is definitely not finished yet. Um, yeah, just to see what games look like when they're half done, like a cake sort of almost there. <laughs> in the oven. Ooh, yeah. Looks like a cake. Yes. Yeah. Looks like a mini version of the cake. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so if you're um, interested, please add us to our Steam wish, wish list and follow us on all the socials. Um, it helps us keep hype uh, and 
and helps us know what you are thinking and also helps you know what we're thinking. Yeah. And just, I've, I've been trying to figure this out because right now we are live live, but the thing is that this might be getting recorded and then played again later. So the way that you can tell if this is the actual live <laughs> thing that you're watching is if there are three channels on um, on Steam and, and this is like one of the three channels, that means it's right now. It's our time, like Saturday midday, um, the 24th. Uh, or if it's on Twitch as well, because we're streaming it live to Twitch. Um, so that's live live. Um, it's been really fun and mm. interesting. I'll say that word tactfully to stream. <laughs> stream for the first time with this uh with Ludo Naricon a good experience and yeah learning learning lots and having a good time and and uh, hoping that it's good content and that you're all enjoying it yeah, yeah. it's yeah. been enjoying a it. weird stream right because it goes where so we've actually set up a virtual computer so that um we can have those two streams looping while we're asleep yeah. um which is not the usual streaming experience, right? So yeah, yeah. lots of layers of newness. Um, yeah. And I think new Layer. for Steam and, and that and stuff as well. Um, yeah. Yeah. We're, we're spinning several plates on the top of several tall thin sticks and uh, <laughs> maybe only one of them like wobbled a little bit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Jason was saying he's proud of us. I agree. I, I'm proud of us too. I think we've done yeah. really well. I think so yeah. too. I hope the audience enjoys us gushing about ourselves. Um, <laughs> we're just I, that I good, mean, okay? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm enjoying it. <laughs> we love you too, um, audience. Yeah. So so yeah, I guess this 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 particular stream is kind of here to let people like ask questions and stuff. Uh, but then, and then we're also just thinking to play through the, the the current demo and chat about it and and all that kind of thing. I guess uh, I'm I'm at the at the range. So should I click begin? Yes, go Let's for do it. it. Yeah, cool. Begin. So even this loading screen has been. Oh, oh sorry. that's okay. <laughs> Just so used to clicking that button. It has <laughs> changed a couple of times. Yeah. Yeah. And then this, Jason. <laughs> this intro was a bit of a surprise to the rest of the team. I feel like it was just sort of like plopped in one day. In yeah. um, <laughs> it was. It was right. It and totally was. <laughs> was it in the lead up? It was in the lead up to PAX, right? Yeah. 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 So, and then you wrote the rest of the goat story. Well, <laughs> was the yeah, goat always there? Yeah, because because Esther says that they're going to go solve a mystery about a goat, and um, you know, I'm not going to say what happens with that mystery, but um, the, uh, I think actually for a long time we had had the idea of. Um, Actually, maybe I'll we'll even pause it so we can talk about it. And we can kind of be pausing and resuming because it'd be interesting to talk about this stuff as well. Um, for a long time, we had the idea that when Casey leaves the elevator, somebody like kind of accosts Casey straight away. Yes. Um, yes. And Hello. Yeah, yeah. And um, and that became Esther. And mm. But yeah, it wasn't in the build for a long time, uh, but it was in the writing. And then when we... When we were putting the, the demo together, I was like, "Let's actually get this going and and see whether it works." And I really like it. I think it, I think it works. Yes, so much. <laughs> it's yeah. such a perfect intro um, yeah. to the game and to Esther. Like, <laughs> yeah. hello, yeah. <laughs> um, and then okay, so where did the goat story come from? I have to ask you that. Uh, it's. I, I think I think I think Georgia would have to answer it because I think it technically ah. comes from Georgia. Mm -hmm. All right, we will accost Georgia. Georgia is, <laughs> yeah. Georgia is our writer, um, uh, who was with us for the first few years of development um, before she got way too busy doing very cool stuff, but still helps out a lot. Mm. Um, 
yeah now now it feels like she's kind of back in a she's in back a isn't it? yeah a lot yeah, yeah. She's i mean it's doing a bunch of writing writing with me recently which has been super exciting yeah yeah it's been kind of hard to tell with all this staying at home yeah totally yeah yeah because um yeah it's we're all kind of doing these little bits and pieces and catching up when we can mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But Georgia Simons, um, Simmons, sorry, Georgia, is <laughs> really well known in the Melbourne theatre community. Um, whenever mm. I meet another theatre person and I'm like, oh, I've been working with Georgia Simmons, they're like, wait, this Georgia? Yes. And then they gush about her work. Um, yeah. So, yeah, it's really exciting to have that community um, keeping an eye on us and like knowing about our work a bit. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's been really fun. Where, uh, where, where do you all reckon I should go? Ida. Ida? Sure. I love Ida. Ida, my, I don't know. I say this about literally all of the characters. <laughs> They're my favorite. <laughs> uh, but I do love Ida. Yeah. I think I relate you to Ida a lot. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, she was a lot of what I guess everyone was doing. Um, but yeah, I think that she really pulled you in at the start of development. Yes. Mm. Hmm. want to say as well that if the gameplay is appearing a bit choppy um that's probably due to the australian internet that's yeah my we're just... general general fallback <laughs> on that yeah 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 but you can watch the other stream um that's got smooth gameplay and also you can just download the demo yeah. download the demo yeah totally yeah um and I'm not sure, Maze, are we transmitting audio of the f gameplay to our viewers at the moment? Um, that will be up to Jason. Uh, I'll, I'll try turning it up a little bit. I'll see if... Um, yeah. Volume mixer. Um, we learnt, or I learnt a new thing about Zoom just yesterday, is that you can actually share audio from your desktop. Um, I didn't realise mm. that, but... Yeah, you can, which is yeah. <laughs> seems like a yeah, seems like fun. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, it seems like something everything should have, but Skype and Discord, you have to do some hacky stuff to get it yeah. happening. Um, well, the reason I wanted to bring audio up at the moment is just because we've had the pleasure of working with um, Anne Charleston for the voice of Ida. Um, and if you if you do get your hands on the demo or watch the gameplay stream there's a few um scenes with ida where you can um hear that and how gorgeous it is one of the questions we were like really frequently asked during pax and also during day of the devs was um whether we're planning to have all of the characters be voiced and i just wanted to say a resounding yes um of course it's just uh you know indie dev life that some things uh come later than others and yeah the voice acting is one of those things but we're hoping we're hoping to get on that soon and having actors like like Anne charleston has been yeah really inspiring and making us excited to get on that soon yeah and like it's been part of our process um of learning when and how to do voiceover so like the voiceover that's mm. in the current demo is our second round um, where I learn a bit more about the audio engineering side of doing VO um, in an actual studio, not just in my home studio. <laughs> um, and uh, one of the reasons also that we did voiceover before the whole game was written, so usually we'll do voiceover once everything is written rather than bit by bit mm. so that it has more sense of continuity. Um, is so that we could have voiceover in to react against as artists and as designers. Like we needed something in there and our scratch video was not happening. Um, and also when we did the scratch video, I found out that I really, I'd like editing voiceover for a little while. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. But our game has so much. Um, yeah, it was yeah. A, it was just a huge manual process to get it all implemented, like all cut out and then implemented. Yeah. Yeah. So we even yeah. learned like you know ways to mitigate that during the recording, and we were, um, so we work with Tiff and Newsom, who is based in Brisbane, 
um, and she professionally does ADR for film. Um, so she's very used to cleaning and editing lines of dialogue like forever and ever and ever. Um, and she gave us some really good tips about like the in-studio pipeline um, and also how to deliver it to her so that she could edit it way faster than me um, and then send it back. And yeah, so just like learning that pipeline and learning the kinds of things that we like to do. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Um, in um Oh, I was just going to say, um, I've been just because I've been in control of this, Deborah, what I've been doing is showing off all of the things that were hard to do, like all of the, <laughs> nice. uh, getting the animation going for picking up that photo frame or um, I don't think I got her to pick up Toddy yet, but um, the, the animation where uh, Casey um, rubs Ida's hands that are a bit sore, like that was a... Uh, mm hard to get going and I was happy that it worked nice yeah yeah like how many I mean sorry I, I I ask this every day even though I'm like on the core team of this game how <laughs> like I didn't know about this you know rubbing Ida's hands it's this tiny little thing that you can do in the middle of this first conversation with her mm. like with all of our characters or with a most of the characters there are loads of these tiny little things um out there yeah mm. yeah That's yeah cool. <laughs> yeah it's it, it's all stuff and like you know one of the other things that that happened there because i wasn't controlling it a lot was that ida was bringing up things to talk about or saying things or and then you could see there that ida just remembered that um, she had to go do something, and so she just left the room. More like got bored of Casey not contributing to the <laughs> yeah, <probably>. bloody conversation, <laughs> Jason. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, and yeah, that's like, yeah, just the structure of the game kind of means that even if you, like, you to actually be able to see all of that stuff, you really just have to be spending all of your time with that character. But uh, even if you do spend all of your time with that character, there that will then mean that you haven't like learned something somewhere else on the ship that you can mm. bring to that character to talk with them about yeah mm -hmm. exactly or you don't get to hear what that character's like um if they don't know you very well you yeah. Know? <laughs> yeah yeah totally yeah can we show how the journal works um yeah yeah sure like some example of it yeah um we should be able to oh it's a little bit tricky because let's see let's try our next room because we might almost be out of time on this playthrough we might have to start again oh sure but that's all right but, I but, but, but to, i'll like, play play through to the end yeah. yeah i wanted to pick up on one of the other points like yeah goldie missing some of these little story parts happens um you know because for me, I'm like, I have listened to every single piece of video so many times now, <laughs> and I am very well aware of every single line. <laughs> um, yeah. But that means I miss art things. Like, you know, yeah. one day I pulled down from our GitHub and um, walls appeared, and I was like, oh, our game has walls now. <laughs> <laughs> and I totally missed, like, all of the development of those walls. Um, yeah. Uh, and Tommy's room had plants suddenly and I was like mm. plants <laughs> um I think over the coming months that's going to happen more and more and more like we're doing a big props push soon and um have been working on the architecture architectural stuff a lot recently so that'll be um the next thing to be polished um but looking at it I mean the, sh the ship's gone through so many changes it's kind of starting to look how I w want it to look. Um, yeah, she's like, definitely. I have all these memories of spending like hours and days with, uh, not with not with Where's Wally, but with kind of those intricately illustrated kids book. What's kids books, what's that one know? that you have talked about um, a lot? And brought a, in. It's office. called a, a puzzling day at, at Castle McPelican. Yes, which is. <laughs> like coursing through my veins um, <laughs> sort of that's a bit of a spoiler that I love that book so much I kind of <laughs> like to keep that one fairly close to my chest but it it's just a book full of little visual puzzles and mysteries and um beautiful uh illustrate ink ink based illustration and um 
yeah, I, le- I lean on that very heavily. So, mm. but having having the game running underneath that intricate visual style is is just like that on on um, on drugs, like where you are not looking at a static thing and and like you're not. It's it's like impossible nearly to find every single hidden thing on this beautifully illustrated thing because it's so dynamic. Mm. I'm just excited for that. If I was seven, you know, uh, I think I would, I would pour over this <clears throat> project in the same way, um, but just never, never find everything, and that's exciting. Yeah. yeah. That um, that that interaction that just happened between um, where uh, between Ida and Tommy, where Ida um, like helps Tommy uh, and walks with her together, that was another one of those things that. Um, took a lot of work but it was very exciting to 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 get going yeah i remember the whole team gushing at once when that animation came up and we were like oh yeah. my god look at their feet yeah. they're moving differently like, <laughs> yeah. like oh, it's so much detail colonica yeah. colonica was um the obvious choice when i was thinking about who i wanted to bring on to do the animations that their work is just so nuanced and um delicate and really well considered uh i'm a big big fan of everything that colonica does so mm. yeah just mm. gorgeous colonica yeah. quigley is re- such a sensitive artist um uh they've made some really cool stuff i remember seeing something um that was a scan of colonica's hand um and it was about like waking up in the in a morning of colonica um and it was just like it It was her whole head it was yeah right yeah Yeah. i think it was called i think it was called another sunrise i'm really sorry if i got that name wrong yeah it was beautiful yeah Yeah. like a little vignette sort of game um yeah it's gorgeous um just before we leave this screen this uh we, we we kind of added this screen um for pax to just kind of try to because because we to be honest, we were worried uh, before we went to PAX, and I think afterwards we realized that we didn't need to be as worried. But we were worried that like people would play it and not really realize, oh, wait a second, there's all of these different things that are happening simultaneously. So we were like, let's let's add a little peek behind the scenes to show them actually more things are happening. Um, but it's nice to have it in the build now, uh, both for Ludo and Aricon, and then also because I can point to it right now and say that on the other stream, uh, looping every four hours or so, uh, there's a little tech deep dive that um, where uh, Maze and another awesome team member, Aspen, uh, kind of uh, help me dive into some of that tech stuff. Um, and also, um, we kind of all talk as a team a bit about like the design of simultaneous stories and why it's important to us and stuff. Um, yeah, so definitely uh, try to catch that throughout Ludo and Aricon if, if you can, um, if you've got time. Should I hit play again and... Um... Yeah, maybe return to title and skip intro and then that yeah. way we can just dive straight in. Yeah, mm. sure. Um... I love that scheduler. Like it just looks so <laughs> real. Also, like yeah. something that I would use in my day to day. Yeah, totally. which makes sense because it is everyone's day to day on the ship. Um, yeah, yeah. I just, we got to show that off a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally. Yeah. It's, 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 oh, oh yeah. sorry. Go, no, go ahead. I was just going to say if anybody has any questions um, and want to pop those through. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Don't interrupt. Yeah. Yeah, no, nah, no. Nah, mm-hmm. Yeah, I think if there are questions that are either from this stream or from any of the stuff that's popped up on one of the other streams, we're, we're thinking to probably do another one of these tomorrow as well, which will yeah. give people more of a chance to have seen what's on the main stream and and uh, and tune in. The mainstream. Um, yeah. Not that we're mainstream. <laughs> yeah. <We're> so <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Well, uh, now that we're back at the screen, Maze, did you want to say the thing that I blocked you from saying the first time around by accidentally just clicking this button too quickly? 
Ah, oh, yeah, that this um, screen itself, like the little description that the player gets to come into our demo has changed a few times. Yes. And like, so the, the first time that we even implemented this screen, because it wasn't even there in the first place, um, was because our previous demo was coming in halfway through day two mm -hmm. of, of the game. And yeah. now the demo that we have is a bit of a mix of day two and day one content, like basically just like the really polished stuff that we want to get feedback from players and stuff on. Um, yeah. Yeah. How do you, how, how do you write this sort of intro? And oh my God, look at that visual, Goldie. Oh, yeah. oh well done yeah. again, always. <laughs> That's no worries, mate. Um, you write the <laughs> intro like this, I think, by just saying, okay, almost formulaically like what does it need what's what's this piece of writing need to what does this piece of writing need to achieve okay it needs to be a succinct explanation that catches the potential player up to speed without overwhelming them not too long so that they don't just like pound through and like click like click through you know they want to i want to i would like them to take a minute to read it mm. um because it's interesting yeah. like regardless of where in the game the player like if the player comes in halfway through the game yeah they're going to have missed some stuff but even if they come in at the start of the game they're going to have missed some stuff because like yeah all the characters have lives yeah 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 it's like the, this was definitely difficult to to figure out exactly what text should go here um yeah and yeah i think i think as goldie was saying it's kind of just figuring out um like the the key is because even though this is this is now kind of starting from the start of the game it doesn't have some of the intro stuff that we're planning to have there and mm -hmm. i think that was part of the goal of this little bit of writing was to kind of get across some of the stuff that's in those little um bookends mm. uh, yeah bookends yes yeah yeah which uh, we won't talk too much about uh partially because uh they're still not fully planned through but uh <laughs> but i think those will be very exciting when uh when we're able to talk about them um let's, let's board the hospital <clears throat> yeah yeah um uh yeah the, the last thing i was going to say about this bit of writing is i think it's in i think it's important even though our game isn't uh it's about all of the different characters and what they're doing it's important to give the player a little bit of like this is what your this is a general idea of what your goal is um yeah. even though yeah we're not really a goalie game but this just gives mm -hmm. it the player a little bit of something to hang on to so that if they're standing around going like what should i do then they can think oh maybe i should check my notebook maybe i should go ask people some questions nice yeah i think it's yes. a good like it's not a compromise it's like we had this discussion a lot right is the kinds of people who want more goals and more sense of direction um yeah you know it's like how like yeah we we get what that feels like where gamers too you know like um yeah. and so the design of trying to figure out okay how can we put something in there that adds to the experience um mm. yeah it was interesting for us and like i remember goldie had a lot of um ideas around different puzzles and and things like that that we could put in and yeah we worked through just so many different iterations of how do we get that feeling of being goal oriented um and still trying to keep the natural this world is alive you're a 14 year old girl you have that much agency <laughs> you know mm -hmm. um, yeah. i just want to give a special special shout out to these plants who which are mostly by um olivia haynes yes so while we're here yeah yeah olivia haynes is awesome um yeah she did a, a, a bunch of stuff for us i think don't remember which year it was um but uh, seven, 17 i would guess yeah 17 or 18 17. yeah yeah um but yeah i think we're um yeah yeah definitely contributed a lot to to the art style particularly of a lot of the objects yeah she has a whole lot of games on itch um as well really beautiful little mm. games um with like an amazing aesthetic 
Yeah. Yeah. Uh, sorry, Jace, what were you saying? Um, I was going to say about the uh, basically right now what I'm doing is getting to the notebook stuff. I'm pretty sure mm -hmm. one of one of these things gets to the just as well. I want it while you're getting thinking about that. You can see if you're watching the stream in the corner, the time is ten o'clock. If you haven't caught up yet with how the game works, it's very like stuck on time in a way. So ten a.m. you're here meeting this character, but there's yeah all sorts of other things that are scheduled to happen around 10 a.m. that are happening downstairs and you are missing it, um, which is fine. It's not that you're missing it. It's just that it's happening and you're not there. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess like that you're missing it is very traditional like game dev language. And uh, it's been really interesting to sort of like consistently think about that sort of thing um, through the development of the game. Yeah, but, even just figuring yeah. out our language, right? Like mm. we, we were calling it real-time story. We were calling it all of the characters on their own schedules. We were calling it, you know, we had like a fair few different ways of trying to articulate this concept. Yeah. At the moment, we're pretty heavily using um, simultaneous stories, mm. uh, which seems to fit pretty well. Yeah. So um yeah i don't think the audio is coming through but i heard a couple of scribbles um <laughs> and now that i've kind of been in tomi's room and spent some time with tomi if i open up the notebook i can see that um there's a there's a woman in room 216 that doesn't respond to me when i speak to her her name is tomi hummel and then i saw some golden bear trophies on miss hummel's shelf and basically at this point you've kind of yeah found out some stuff around that um and this is i mean it's something where you can kind of see that the game's the game is still evolving in how like in its design and in how we're opening things up to the player with with that option that says um you know i saw some golden their trophies on Miss Hummel's shelf that unlocks some like conversation with somebody else or it, basically you are able to bring that up with somebody else um, but uh, so far we're not really thinking to let you know who that is or you know if often it's multiple people mm. um, to try to make it more like a real notebook because Casey can't really know who to talk with about it. And Casey might bring it up with a few different people. Um, and then just because I am uh, I know what happens in the story, I know that uh, Heinrich is going to have something to say about um, the, the golden bears. But uh, yeah, um, I'll choose some different options this time. <laughs> I had something terribly interesting to say and then it skipped my mind. Yeah. I just love That's... the different personalities of this. Like Heinrich is like sort of hard to talk to. Yeah. <laughs> like just just like at the start. Um Yeah. There's yeah. A, he's, there's there's like an awkward <laughs> exchange. And and I think that really gets across Casey's character of being um very like um like a little bit nervous and shy. Mm -hmm. Um but it oh yeah. Wow. Heinrich, he's, he's interrupted me when I was trying to uh, <laughs> show, show something about the game. Um, but yeah, this, this is an example of something that, you know, Heinrich's only really going to think to ask you about this at a certain time in the game. Um, I've never seen this scene in my life, and I've been... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So this yeah, option here go. is from the notebook, because I've seen the Golden Bears and I've written about them in my notebook. Ah, yeah, that not was, fast uh, enough. <laughs> yeah, not fast enough. Oh, here's Tommy. Yeah, this is one of the things that's a little bit weird in this demo because there should be a scene where Heinrich and Casey react to Tommy showing up, and there will be in the final game. But just because it's a demo, they don't react to Tommy wandering into Heinrich's room. Um, 
Well, I mean, everyone is used to Tommy just sort of doing her own thing, wandering around. Yeah, but like Casey probably wouldn't really be. Like True. Heinrich yep. might be. Yeah. <laughs> we're, we're definitely used to it. <laughs> <laughs> I think there was a, a point where Tommy yeah. drifted off into the yeah one day. <laughs> yeah, well, that's a pretty... Uh, some pretty funny bugs that happen um and quite a few of them involve Tony actually for some reason there's a something interesting going on there yeah there's a lot interesting going on there yeah. I love Tony yeah um someone described Wayward Strand um or someone described sort of these narrative games as like one evening or two evening games the other day mm. and I hadn't hadn't told you that since I had that conversation but I have been thinking about Wayward Strand as like a two evening game for a little while. Right. Um, it's giving me, bringing me lots of joy to think of it like that. And then, and then, and that would be just to have a pleasant, really pleasant experience. But you could, uh, you know, if you, I think if you wanted to uncover everything, you'd need, you'd need more time. But hmm. I like the idea of it being shorter. Yeah. I just yeah. thought of that. I don't know why I brought it up. Yeah, it's nice having a film length game, um, which and Georgia figured out you'd have to play it over 80 times, which is probably different now. Like yeah. now that the conversation is even more in depth, the dialogue. Um, yeah, to get every single iteration. So Casey's um, writing for her school paper, but is also just curious that's right mm. right mm. yeah yeah it's um it's definitely two things Ooh, let's look at neil peeking in at that uh that thing over there this is the, actually yeah i'm um, sorry to answer that sorry. question yeah <laughs> yeah she's 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 definitely curious a curious person and that's that's partially why being a reporter is interesting mm -hmm. Ah, oh, yeah. This is an interesting thing. This should probably only happen once you've gotten to know Neil. That Casey will just see Neil uh, listening in and then go over and be like, "Ooh, what are you listening into?" But I mean, I don't know. Maybe, maybe that's what a fourteen-year-old would do. Maybe I would have done that when I was fourteen. And imagine someone like Neil would give her like a friendly smile. Yeah, yeah a little totally. wink, say, wink her nudge. Yeah. Yeah. Encouraging. Yeah. <laughs> this is great. <laughs> yeah. That's it. <laughs> that's all he says. Yeah. Mm. But well, that's that's all he says in the demo. But uh, yeah. but, but yeah. in what's written, it actually goes a lot further. That's actually yeah something to talk about as well, which is yeah recently me and Georgia, uh, mainly Georgia because she is an amazingly fast writer, have been. Uh, getting a lot like going a lot deeper into writing a lot of the stuff on like day two and day three mm -hmm. um yeah and so yeah it's interesting for us I think to be playing this demo and kind of seeing things that have already changed in the story or seeing things that have already or to kind of know that like ah oh, you know in the demo this is the little kind of tidbit that you get about this particular storyline, but in what's already written and, and and planned in ink, it's already built out. But uh, it'll take a while for us to actually get that stuff that's built out in ink into the game itself, because that requires that scene direction process. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Yeah. <sighs> Yeah. Well, I guess I'll just I'll jump onto the thing and see if we've got any questions popping up. Um, I'm very excited to check out a couple of friends' streams over yeah, the next couple of days. Totally. I'm a huge fan of um, in, well, a lot of a lot of the games taking part in Ludo Naricom, but. Personally, I'm I'm really excited for um, Welcome to Elk. It just looks like a goldie, like a goldie game. Um, nice. 
I was watching the Coffee Talk stream this morning, um, which is really nice. They have two of the developers doing a a commentary over as well. Um, Yeah. More of an interview style, which is pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that game's been doing really, really well. And I bought it on Steam and Switch on the same day (laughs) because I was like, I need to be able to play it at my desk and also in bed. Um, Yeah. Could you transfer your save file over or does it not really matter too much i haven't tried um yeah there's a lot of different people that you can meet and stuff so that's good yeah um Um, i'm also really interested in rocky when that comes out or rocky i'm not sure of the pronunciation of that i was uh, really the one of the letters and it has the double dots the double dots yeah whatever that's called it's not an umlaut i think it's one of the other ones <laughs> uh, yeah i was really lucky to meet the devs of um Roki over in san francisco in november and we had a really good time if they're watching this they know that we had a really good time <laughs> uh, took a few apologies the next day but it was good and and then the, and their game is gorgeous <laughs> as well as as them um yeah, yeah, so keen on keen on Rocky. Yeah, yeah. there's so uh, many Australian, New Zealand, Southeast yeah. Asia games, um, which is just like it. It feels rare, but we're really getting up there. Um, yeah, Coffee Talk being Indonesian, uh, Frog Detective is there. Another yeah. Melbourne game. Yeah. Beyond um, the Veil amazing. is another Australian or New Zealand game, and Best Friend Friends Forever is New Zealand. Frog Detective, Wayward Strand, and there's another Aussie game. Mutazioni is like, Mutazioni, yeah. They're all mm. uh, remote, but there is a couple of people here. Doctor Douglas Wilson. <laughs> Sorry, Doug. <laughs> yes, that was the fifth one. Um, is the Oz representation on the Mutazioni team, which is another gorgeous game. Um, mm. Yeah, and well deserving of all of its accolades and awards and a special shout out to Hannah Nicklin who is a brilliant um, writer and thinker and, and has been a very sympathetic and empathetic ear to me uh, <laughs> throughout development um, big big love yeah I really like the audio system um, that Doug showed us at free play that's really mm. really cool and um Genesis Noir is also one of the games. They're New York based, um, yeah. but they also have like really beautiful audio. And Jeremy Abels was on one of the panels. Mm-hmm. He's one of the developers behind that one. Um, yeah, there's heaps. There's more. Like there's more that we're definitely not mentioning right now, um, which I'm sorry about. But uh, yeah. yeah, Heaven's Vault, um, made by Inkle. Yes. We use their narrative engine, Ink. Um, yeah. Yeah. And they're lovely guys too. Yeah. Uh, so we've got a question um, coming in, which is uh, Are the characters inspired by our own grandparents? Um, for me, more my parents. Um, but inspired, I guess, of, of course, a little bit my, by my own grandparents. It, Ida looks a lot like my grandma on my paternal side. Um, but isn't at all what she was like. She was a lot more like Esther. Um, Yeah, yeah, I mean, a little bit. They're in the back of my mind for me. Um, Mm. But for me, if if I'm pulling from people who I know in real life, it's either like people who I know outside of my family or my parents. Um, Yeah, I think think for me, Ida, um, there's a lot of links to uh, between, between Ida and my 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 grandma on my mum's side um yeah that, like it's definitely not a one-to-one kind of link uh and partially because i guess for for all of us uh you know we're all putting into all of these characters in in different ways um and then also that's not um i guess as i'm writing or as i'm thinking about a character sometimes it's handy to kind of think about, well, let's imagine that they were this person, Um, but often it's more um, handy to 
the uh, like it just makes sense for a character to come from at least a, a couple of different or a few different sources. Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 Right. Well, hi, hi, Jill. I've put you in my game exclusively. <laughs> my best representation of you without any interviewing or consultation. Hope that's hope that's chill. Yeah. Which I would hate that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But it, like, but it is interesting because um, I like I've I've read interviews with authors um who do sometimes like have you know they might um mm. there are people that write uh kind of lightly fictionalized versions of their own life and you can really clearly see like a one-to-one -one link of a character to a to a person um i've apparently inspired a character in somebody's novel exactly yeah that that kind of thing just and incredibly flattering well yeah and like you know is back, that is yeah. that cool back when is i that... didn't know georgia very well um i went to one of her readings because i was trying to get get to know georgia really well <laughs> um, cool. and she had named one of her characters maze <laughs> and i was like the whole time i was like oh. <laughs> you know, who is this person and i was like no i don't think it's totally me i think they're just normal they're just a person i don't think so but i questioned her afterwards she was like oh, i just think it's a cool name and i was like it mm. is a cool name <laughs> yeah it is, a, it is a cool name and honestly as yeah as somebody that does name characters sometimes you you'll meet somebody and you'll go, ooh, cool name. And then you'll just put it somewhere. <laughs> and then you'll go, and then later on, you'll go, need a cool name. Maze, all right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, that was a very tense reading yeah. for me. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> because it's not like, yeah, it's not a normal name. Like she definitely yeah. met me and then put it in, you know, like, yeah. come on. <laughs> Yeah. can't lie about that anyway yeah <laughs> um but yeah it's i think it's complicated to be honest like that that whole topic um because you know it is a little bit it is a little bit um cheeky in a way because because i may maybe for each character i could probably think about two or three real life people that i sometimes do think about mm. when i think about that character and i'm like Same. Um, and it's and it's a it's a helpful way to to be able to think about them and try to ensure that they do things that seem like they make sense and stuff. Um, yeah, I think that's true. Is like when we're trying to think about what would this character say, that's when we start trying to think of the older people in our life and what they might say. So yeah. Rather, yeah. Rather than being it's a specific person, it would be like, oh, what would my grand say? It's like, yeah. Well, of all of the older people in my life, what different reactions might they all have, and like, which one is suitable for now? Yeah. Um. Yeah, and I think like, you know, as you're both talking, I was trying to figure out like, yeah, I really, I do think about my grand and pa during this, but I can't pin them on any characters. I just like. You know, at first I was like, I think about the way the pa moves and the way that he mm -hmm. plays with his teeth. And then Gran, I was like, I think about how she's very strong-willed um, and a bit of a socialite and um, how fit she is. <laughs> like, that's, you know, uh, and it doesn't come across in an obvious way in the game. It's more just like having to pinpoint those people in your life um, in general when you're working on this. That's actually something that it would be a technical challenge and quite a bit of work, but it would be so cool if we could have one of the older characters, uh, you know, oh, it's time to have a nap, and they pluck out their teeth and put it in the, uh, <laughs> you know, the, <laughs> the cup of water or whatever. We got to research <laughs> what, what teeth were like in the 70s. Yeah, um, true, yeah, because yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm basing a lot of my uh you know that initial reaction just off like the simpsons and yeah um, right <laughs> grandpa simpson and his his teeth in the in the cup but that was like in 90s thing i wonder if in mm -hmm. the 70s yeah was were dentures like a really big thing 
yeah, like just differently. Like now they're suction, but maybe then they have more wires or yeah, uh, yeah. This is what happens working on this game. We know yeah, really yeah, specific you're just things. constantly, <laughs> and and that's a, that's often when um, like in the other stream, I've got that uh, wonderful kind of consultationy interview with um with Goldie's mum Liz, who was a nurse in the seventies. And I feel like that's often what we do when we get into those kinds of situations is uh, Goldie will just be like, all right, I'm just going to call mom or I'll just, I'll just mm. SMS mom. And you get an answer back on, you know, what oh, we need. Yeah, yeah. It turns out that IV um, uh, packs in, uh, in the seventies were all in glass bottles. They weren't mm. um, that kind of stuff. Yeah. That kind mm. of plasticky uh uh silicon? container yeah yeah maybe silicon yeah yeah that's something that we're still gonna try to get in there and replace <laughs> at some point because i think we've still got one of those silicon we style do. yeah 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 this morning i was watching um abc news in the background and because it's anzac day today right yeah um there was one segment that really stood out to me was they had a food historian on talking about anzac bickies um mm -hmm. and how you know they started off during world war ii but then a bit after world war ii like coconut was added and then um the newsreader was like oh, i didn't have the right flour because of the whole pandemic um yeah. so i had self-raising flour and it was just like oh food historian yes <laughs> i want a food historian on wavered strand um i want a food historian in my house every morning Yes. <laughs> today, today veggie mite toast. Let's talk. Yeah, avocado toast. What's this? Um, yeah. Totally. <laughs> mm. uh, um, yeah, that's 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 very cool. I was just thinking, do we want to wrap for now, um, or ask again? Like, you know, if anybody is watching and they have a question, um, you can whack it in the chat or tweet us facebook um yeah, we should yeah we should we should have eyes across most things yeah, yeah. i um, hope our so, talk was inspiring um and i guess yeah, we'll or see you all tomorrow yeah before we sign off um my friend olivia has just commented that she's listening right when we're cool. wrapped so live <laughs> can uh, live and everybody else you can you can check the other videos that are looping for the next couple of days um that are on this page that you're on now. They just see other videos. Um, and yeah, the other thing, of course, is to add us to your wish list. It's yeah. my catchphrase. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, thanks so much, everyone. Yeah, um, thanks. You can check out our other videos where we go into the characters. We go through Ida, Casey, and Esther, a little bit of deep dives, as well as um, a deep dive into the tech behind the narrative um which is cool we have a wonderful interview where jen frank interviewed us um who's quite a prestigious amazing journalist um and then with liz bartlett as well um yeah like and so <laughs> and we'll, yeah we'll be back we're thinking we're planning to be back this time tomorrow um uh and we might surprise you with another one, but who knows how we're going to be feeling. So keep an eye on our socials for announcements on that. And if you can think of any questions that you do want us to tackle for tomorrow, that would be um, really lovely. We would love to answer them within reason. Yeah. Yeah. All awesome. right. Bye, everyone. Thanks yeah. so much for watching. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thanks, Ludo and Aracon, too. <laughs>